welcome to the 72 Pin Connector Podcast. Almost made a mistake, but we rectified it in a very small amount of time. With us this week, <laughs> we have Tom. Hi. We have Josh. Hello. And we have myself, Adam. But we're missing one. We are. We're missing we are Eric. Missing. Uh, we had to eat him. We did. Yeah. So, so but during, during good thing, we have weeks, eternal life now. That's, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's we, a positive. So <laughs> the, the, way it, the way it usually goes um, is if you eat the heart of a programmer, um, you yourself uh, you know, become a daemon in the simulation known as life, uh, <laughs> and you will live forever. All right, sick. It's perfect. Yeah, well done. <laughs> yeah. So that's what we did. This is great. We're professionals. Don't worry about this. So how's your, how's your guys' week's been? How's it going? Pretty solid. Pretty solid. Um, solid. There is there is uh, one notable. Uh, I don't know if anyone uh, has noticed yet, but there's one thing going on over here. Let's take a look. Oh oh oh! Oh look at the microphone. Oh, oh look at that! Oh, oh look at that. that! It looks What's just like there? Tom's microphone. How did it you does. acquire such a thing? Well, thanks to our wonderful community and our wonderful subs um we were able to up the sound quality and the biggest piece of sound quality i was missing was mine <laughs> uh so now if you notice i don't have a big one over my face uh, got this guy right here yeah this guy you guys did that yes thank yes. you <laughs> we really appreciate that. that was the this is the first thing that we've uh you know everything that everything that you guys donate or or you know uh, all so, the sub yeah everything everything just goes directly back into the community any sort of community events anything like that will be funded directly from yes. you guys and so, uh, maybe some hookers and blow but we'll keep that to a minimum like ninety percent yeah yeah I mean that mic wasn't all the money we got no but uh no we put it to a <clears throat> some good use. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like, uh, what did we get? We got seven hookers in, and then uh, a rock three... the size of a small dog's head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then then the microphone. Yeah. So, yeah, and that was. I mean, we kind of cut costs. And we wanted to make sure that. We... So yeah, we're good. We're good now. <laughs> Sadly, wow. I uh, I didn't do a a ton of gaming this week. You did at not. all. Why? Yeah, Why? I I didn't. Why would you do that? I I don't know. Hold on. It worked, Hold on. Don't mistaken. you care about the people? We, I don't. We, oh, we made a we did, made this oh, mistake my, last my time, bad. and I will not let you guys make this mistake again. Tom doesn't care about the Food. people. Food. Food. I had. Oh. I had. What'd you have? A jalapeno egg burger. Last jalapeno time. Jalapeno egg not, Last burger. time, but the time before that, we talked about it. We said, hey. We said, hey, check it out. We need like uh, egg burgers are the best, the best thing ever. We all love them, and I'm like, I've never had one, so I had one for the first time. There you go. It's fantastic. Oh good shit! Good job. Yeah, it was awesome. very good. It was very very. Good. I I will definitely have that jalapeno. Egg. Adding jalapeno is really important. My 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 week of food has been exceptional because I also had Korean barbecue. Oh yes, you told us nice. about this. In the... Yes. Oh my god. So me and Adam went to Korean barbecue together when we were at RLCS, and this place is just as good, but it's directly across the street from my work. Like you could spit on it. You could throw. You could take. You could like open up the window, and and, and throw a rocket, right. And that's horrible for me. You're because gonna, it was very gonna, good. It was nineteen dollars, huh? Your cholesterol is going to skyrocket. Oh my god! And it really will. It was only also, nineteen dollars for lunch too. Also, your happiness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of Korean barbecue uh, in relation oh. to happiness is directly correlated. <laughs> That's true. But it was, it was, freaking awesome. So good. It was. We ended up like. We ended up getting like a whole bunch of jalapenos too. We ended up getting like uh, like six bowls of jalapenos and just dumping them all over the uh, dumping them all over the place and then putting all the uh, the meat in the middle. It was fantastic. It was 
really it was really awesome so when you guys come down which is inevitable um <laughs> we'll take you some korean barbecue that would be fantastic yes Hell it would yeah. i'm always down for korean barbecue there aren't any places close to me that do that <laughs> i looked it up a lot you looked up after la <laughs> yeah there's oh, uh yeah. there's a few korean restaurants but not a Korean barbecue place specifically. Some of them, I'm sure, serve a Korean barbecue dish, but it's not the same. It's the the grill on the table, and they bring in the raw meat, and everybody's cooking it together, and you've got mm -hmm. condiments laying everywhere. You're scoffing at some of the gross uh, stuff on the menu, like entrails, and uh, right, right, <laughs> all that good stuff. <laughs> oh yes. Magic Dave said something about dim sum in the chat. Dim sum? That is another type of place that isn't around here. Um, I there's think a I, lot of dim sum around here. Is there? That's awesome. I have you been? Fun. You know, yeah, I have been. I don't like it. Like, I like it, kind of. There's certain things I like, certain things I don't. I have, there's a there's a bunch of, like, good dim sum places and really shit dim sum places. Oh. And, uh, and it's important you go to the right one. But, um... We should go. That's the thing is last time you came here, you took about like five minutes to glance at uh, Northern California. You're like, that was cool. And then we left. Then we drove to LA. <laughs> yeah. You hung out with some of my friends for like the night. They gave you a whole bunch of whiskey and then we just drove down to LA and then you yeah. promptly left, <laughs> left from <laughs> once we got here. Yeah. So, so dim some good stories, uh, but oh. I also have something food related. Oh, God. Oh, damn it, Tom. <laughs> Get out of here. You're welcome. Um, so, <laughs> last night, uh, I went to a, a totally new Mexican restaurant near me, or at least mm. new to me. Um, I, it's like a tequila bar with a Mexican restaurant. Uh, they've got like over 100 different types of tequila and they offer tequila flights so you can get a flight of various sipping tequilas so flight? guess what wow what's a flight yes okay so oh yeah. here's flight. here's the idea behind the flight um you will have you know like let's say you go to a, a fancy ass bar they've got you know 200 taps and you want to try a, a good selection of beers but you don't want to buy one whole beer right you don't want to have four big beers you want to just sample a lot of different ones mm -hmm. so they have flights they give you smaller beers uh but like four five of them so you can try a bunch of different stuff without you know getting completely tanked yeah. uh this place has flights of tequila where uh, they give you glasses of sipping tequila to try out. So um, I have never had sipping tequila. I, it's uh, it's good. I have an it's aversion good. to tequila. I think it's gross. But I've also only had like bachelor party tequila. <laughs> I've not had like sipping on tequila. Awesome top end tequila. Yeah, the stuff we had last night wasn't, like, the top, top end. Uh, on the menu, there was one... It was, like, a, a small sipping glass of tequila that was $200. We Damn. did not order that. $200? Yeah, yeah That's $200. That's way too much money for some tequila. I'm, I'm not... I'm not... I mean, the most I'll buy, like... I'll buy, like, an expensive bottle or something. Yeah. I'm not gonna... I don't know. I'm just not I'll that guy. Yeah, I'll buy like a $50 so, bottle of scotch and anything beyond that. I'm like, eh, no, no. That bougie Thanks. life. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not a part of that bougie <laughs> lifestyle. Like there's a guy, there's a guy at my work that, that uh, is really into like really, really nice shoes. And I'm like, that's sick. I'm glad that you're really into really nice shoes. And your shoes look fantastic. My shoes, like I'm not going to, I can't, I can't live that lifestyle. I feel like getting really expensive uh, alcohol is not uh is a part of that same <laughs> in that same vein. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's there's no way I'm gonna pay two hundred bucks for a glass of tequila. Um, it's no, just no. But uh, the if ones you were, we had, if you were, were just like suffocating in money, though, would you do it I, for the I novelty? Oh hell yeah, yeah, I would absolutely. If I was suffocating in Probably money, I'd buy some all sorts of stupid shit. 
Yeah, that's a that's a convert. That's a totally different scenario. I'd get, I'd get <laughs> like if, a, I, if I was uh, middle class retired, I probably would just for the novelty. <laughs> if I was drowning in money, I'd do stupid shit like get a replica of that van from Dumb and Dumber with like the dog, the dog. Video. Oh my oh, that god, would be sweet. that would be amazing. I'd buy a goat. Nice. That's I, don't, a good I don't know why that's, that's my solid. that's my threshold. Just kind of like <laughs> standing on top goat. of your house all day. Purchase. I don't know, like. <laughs> Seems like yeah, maybe there was. A, do you see that kid that bought a llama? Never. Mind. We're getting off track. What are we doing? What? I think we're talking about video games. What's a video we're doing, game? We're doing. Tequila <laughs> play. That's what we're doing. What? All right. So so before I dive into my gaming week, I do want to put out a general PSA out there. If any of you are interested in game development, there's this great, totally free, no royalties, no nothing, open source game engine. Uh, that's, you know, fully built. You can build, you know, whatever game you want with this thing. Uh, and again, totally free, totally open source. It's called uh, the Godot engine or the Godot engine. Um, they just had a big V3 release, totally rebuilt their entire, uh, you know, 3D rendering pipeline, the graphics system in there, the physics hmm. engine, uh, like huge, huge amounts of work to get this thing put out. I was playing with it today, and it's nice. It's really nice. It's, it's the a good, only... like, learning engine, right? Like, your first video yeah. game. You don't want to just, like, um, jump into Unreal 4. <laughs> so, <laughs> Un Unreal, uh, UDK, Unity, they've all come a, you know, a really, really long way to make uh, your first experience with it, especially if you're following along with an official tutorial. Nice. Um, and, you know, kind of... Uh, you know, they have a slower on-ramp. Um, Godot doesn't have that. Um, okay. It's not big enough. Like, anyone and everyone creates games in Unity. Uh, yeah. The uh, Godot engine isn't quite popular enough to have these tutorials everywhere quite oh, yet. Gotcha. Um, yeah, but it is free. Um, and it's, you know, small enough that you could easily get a grasp on you know, what this engine could do over, you know, a couple weeks. Um, so if anyone's looking for something to play with developing games, uh, you know, check it out. It'll be, you know, free Go and wonderful. I, I feel like something like that you really right? start. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. Uh, I feel like you should really start with community. If you really want to get in into... Uh, like game design initially, and you're just trying to do your first stupid like stick figure walking simulator. Mm -hmm. um, you probably want to dive into something like Unity first. Personally, I think that's a better way to go. It's way more supported. It's free. You're not going to make anything that's going to make any money. You're just like trying to figure it out. And then once you kind of figure out, like, okay, this is how game development works. I kind of understand. Then if you're actually trying to publish something, something like Godot would be a good a good thing for someone that's like coming up from beginner level into like intermediate and I there's like... no licensing right exactly like... that's the big point mm -hmm. so like when you do something in unity that's the that's the biggest uh note for anybody when you do something in unity you know you're going to take it's free to to download and build your game but as soon as you publish that game there's a cost associated with that every yeah. you know whenever someone's whenever you start making money on it um they take a portion of that because it's on their engine so you know, maybe start in Unity, learn learn the ropes, take a class, then maybe check out uh, Godot and get involved in that. That's a good thing. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Uh, one thing I did test and it works really, really, really well um, is you've got different export profiles. So you know, you can put out a build on Windows, the Mac, Linux, whatever. Mm -hmm. But they've got a web exporter that works really well right now. So it'll just give you a, a web page. So if you want somebody to play your game on a website, you just upload this somewhere, and it's your whole game. Oh, no, cool. Yeah, no weird oh, plugin, wow. no add-ons, no none of that. You just go to the page in Chrome or Firefox or whatever. It loads, and you play the damn game. It's That's so really cool. cool. Hmm. Really cool. Now you better hope um, you have that on a nice server that can handle the other people playing it a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, I, I guess they redid their multiplayer as well. So, hmm. yeah, like, it's it's pretty nice. Um, well, um, like, okay, so speaking of multiplayer, I don't know if you guys have got uh, got a chance. Are, are, well, let's let's talk about something real quick. First of all, 
Our post guys. GTA. Grand Theft we'll, Auto we'll, 5. We'll, exactly. We're doing GTA Grand Theft Auto 5. We've done it before, but we've always been stuck on races. Um, I think this time we're going to be doing something a little, a little different. We're going to just... A lot of people are like, oh, Grand Theft Auto, kind of boring. Don't like it. Um, I think those people are really missing out on some of the some of the funner points. Yeah, funner is a word. We're going to see funner, it. more funner, uh, <laughs> uh, funner wrist. The yeah. most the most funner wrist portion of GTA, which is just kind of BSing. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that we really want to we really want to show off. So we're going to be doing a lot. We're going to do no races. We're going to be doing a whole bunch of different just screw around stuff. So please come. Enjoy the postcast game. I think a bunch of you already have. It's going to be a great time. But in that same vein, I started playing some of the uh, Doomsday Heist. And I don't know if you guys know. Do you guys know um, anything about the Doomsday Heist? No. Have you checked it I out? I know okay. nothing. The, so the only thing I know about the Doomsday Heist is they took you know, what would have been a single-player expansion for Grand Theft Auto V, mm -hmm. they murdered it, and then they took the components of its corpse and they shoved it into a multiplayer update that they could sell microtransactions against. Sweet. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. we're gonna get to that. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, <laughs> it, the Doomsday Heist is great. It's uh, it's it it is an expansion on the main game. So the main game they had they didn't have heists before. Later on, they take they took up and uh, they they brought in heist took up heist. And they brought them in, and they, they promised it for a long time. It took forever for them to put in heists, and they had to put in heists. Heists are super fun, but there's only, like, five, uh, four of them at first, and they mm -hmm. added another one and another one. And they were all free, and they all kind of piggybacked on your same house. You had to buy this fairly expensive house, but it was reasonably priced. And then you're good, and you can actually do those heists. But now they have the Doomsday Heist, and I, it's too expensive it's really too expensive. It's one run through. It's really, really cool because you, what you do is you go in and you do um, a setup for the... So all the heists. Let's, let's get down to what, what a heist is in, in, in GTA. Drop, so in a, drop some knowledge on me. Yes. Okay. So a heist in GTA has a of setup missions and then the final heist. And okay. if you do them all with your friends, you get a bonus. There's all, it's all really good, right? Uh, it's... Probably the most fun you can have in GTA. If you want to play, if you already have GTA and you want to have the most fun you can in multiplayer, you do the heist every time. Uh, they're they're amazing, and I think a few of you, uh, especially Dark Soul, has not done the heist, and those are the most fun. He's gonna love them. You're gonna love them, Adam. I don't know if you've done any heist, mm -mm. Um, but they're great. Um, what what the what the later ones did is they just kind of you bought this big house and then in that big like really expensive house you have a heist planning board and you and you can uh start your heist from there from like later on they just added more heists to that list of heists that you can do now you have these doomsday heists in order to do them you have to first have bought a C ceo off so you could register as a CEO, a CEO, a VIP, or a, I think it was like another small business. So you have to buy these small businesses. These small businesses cost upwards from one to two million dollars in the game, which is a lot. Uh, I don't know if any, if anybody hasn't played it. It's a lot. Cold. Hard <laughs> I don't know how cash. else to phrase it, but that is just it's a lot of grind in order to get that. Mm -hmm. From there, you then have to buy a facility this facility has is about three million to like two to three million to buy and that's even more so that would be like you can get uh in-game currency with real money and i i want right. to say that would be what 60 bucks no that would be no 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 no, no. i think yes three million i think for three million you can buy for I think on the Steam market right now, you can buy for three million. You can think, yeah, I think it's about 50, 50 to 49, 49, 50. Damn. I think you can pull it up. So basically, but it's but it's about like four days of grinding nonstop, right? Mm. Um, the best way to do it is probably to buy uh, to do all your heists. The, the this is the path. So you do all your heists, then you buy a CEO office and you do a bunch of CEO quests probably like every day 
for every five minutes you have to you have to do them. Granted, hopefully no one screws with you during that time period, like hackers or whatever. Um, it is, it, it's really bad. It's really, really, really tough to to get this to get this money saved up to do this heist. And then once you finally buy it, you buy this thing. It costs you know it it's already cost you an arm and a leg. You've been ha- you had to focus. You couldn't buy cars. You couldn't buy. You had to save all of your money up to this point. And then when you finally buy it, it's one heist. It's one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> you you do all that. I thought the Doomsday heist was like when they launched just general heist in GTA Online, and you had you know a smattering of them. You get one. Yes, exactly. So you're gonna what go through. Fuck? You're gonna spend. <laughs> you're gonna spend somewhere of upwards to to five million dollars in the game to get one long heist. That's crazy. And it's long, it's cool, there's a lot to it, and and there it's fun, but you 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 can't help but think to yourself, huh? One heist? One? It, it, the the place is cool, you can you you know you, you can hang out with your friends, you can do a whole bunch of stuff. There's like watching TV. Look at all oh, that cool stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, um you wow. can hold the phone. Yes, yes. You can buy a <laughs> helicopter for five million that you can Ooh. store there. You can store cars there. That so, all cost upward to one million, three million. Th- this is my issue with GTA. If you I'm level a hundred and I've played since PlayStation, and I've been saving up money doing heists over and over again, and I just got this. And I had to sell, in order to do this, I had to sell half of my cars just to do this. And I had, and I did a whole bunch of heists. I did other people's heists. It's a freaking nightmare. Wow. I just think that, you know, I don't think GTA or, or Rockstar understands. I think they do understand. This is my point. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I think they, they, they understand it very well. How much players have to either pay out of pocket or spend, or how much time they have to spend dealing with, like, hackers, dealing with, like, the shitty PvP system, the clunky mechanics, in order just to unlock the fun portions of this game. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I've, so I've never the, been a GTA Online guy, and I can see... Where it would be really fun i could absolutely see how it could be very fun but my first experience with gta online was immediately getting killed repeatedly for no reason by a hacker <laughs> like that's a part the of first the first thing, thing is, that even happened that's, when i that's got the whole into game it's okay so like the there's okay so that's what's the problem is it's really really good like the multiplayer the hanging with friends if you take over a lobby that's all super fun Mm -hmm. driving through the city blowing each other up as friends is great hacker gets involved things go south uh it's really really bad the the heists are amazing with friends they're so good i don't i can't stress it enough how much fun the heists are with friends and they just ruin it by having it cost so much time, so much effort, so much out of pocket. It's just not reasonable for and and the, all of this building up into one heist. Come on, come the, on. The thing, the thing I, the best thing I've read and the most accurate thing I've read about Grand Theft Auto Online is it's actually a, a really shitty experience. Like the the whole thing in aggregate is a really shitty experience. But you've got these small nuggets of gold of these these great fantastic moments in the game that absolutely pay off and and make it worth putting up with all the other bullshit but to to me i don't know if it's worth the trade-off especially not now that rockstar is basically forcing people either to grind super hard uh or to use you know real world dollars in order to unlock a single mission um or or any any of the uh you know popular or expensive cars my first experience with grand theft auto online uh was i 
I think I started playing around Christmas. So I put my guy in elf tights with uh, a Christmas hat uh, and like a pink striped shirt. Mm -hmm. I was trying to look like as dumb and ridiculous as humanly possible. I walk into ammunition. Uh, I realized that all of the prices were jacked through the roof. I was expecting single player prices. Uh, so I walked out with a stupid dinky little pistol. Uh, I, I heard some guy on voice chat yell a, a, a slur at me. And uh, <laughs> I, like I walked out. Time. I was like, wait a minute, what? So I walked outside and I got rocket launcher. And he drove away in a super fast car. <laughs> I mean, are, okay. Are there that's, private? That's the whole private game. Can you get that's in a private game. server? That's that's why you don't play by yourself. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it it's an absolute absolutely garbage game by yourself, but it's amazing with friends. And, it, and I know it comes down to that whole. Uh, uh, Dilaz points out something, and I'm gonna. I'm. I really want to point this out. Is that the perks of playing with your friends apply virtually every other game multiplayer game ever? And he's absolutely right. I agree. It's not. It doesn't make it good, just because the multiplayer aspect, the sandbox aspect of it with your friends, you know, is fun, doesn't make this a good game. And it's not a good game. I, I 100% agree. It's just a really big world, and it's fun to dick around. The the thing that the reason I keep bringing it in and we keep playing it is because I've already gone through all of this. I've already bought the house. I have the CEO apartment. I have the, now I have the facilities so I can share all of that content with you guys without you guys actually having to spend the time grinding that mm -hmm. the, the actual out of pocket prices, it, it's ridiculous. And it's so bad. In fact, that you actually hope a hacker shows up because the hackers actually <laughs> give you money They yeah. cheat and they walk around and they give you buckets of cash. Right. It's, and it, then you it, get your account banned by rockstar. Exactly. So I uh, think what we're getting at here is that GTA GTA online could be a really fun experience with your friends, but they're not, yeah. they're just not doing it right. And, really, I, and luckily, um, it's not like we'll be playing it as a postcast game at, you know, any point in the future. Yeah. Not tonight. <laughs> yeah, not tonight at all. No, but like, well, like, like Josh said, he's got the stuff already grinded out in the game. Mm -hmm. You know, if we, when we play tonight, we can just jump into whatever and that's exactly. fine. Uh, you get to have all the fun without any of the grind. And it, it is fun. And the aspects that we're going to have, the things we're going to do, so fun. But at least you don't have to deal with the the, the lameness that I did. <laughs> that being said, the campaign of Grand Theft Auto is still really good. Uh, oh, if, yeah. If you, absolutely if you like the money. If you like GTA games, um, it's certainly the, the biggest world and the, the most to do compared to the other games. Um, so just because the online kind of sucks doesn't mean that you... You know the game is worthless. There's still there's still a huge single player campaign. It is a lot of fun, and that's why I bought initially bought the game, and I that's why I never really bothered with online because I just got it for the single player. Yeah, the the single player totally worth it. Love the story, love the characters, love the action. It was fantastic. I I bought this game for the single player. I didn't buy it for the multiplayer. That was kind of, mm -hmm. I mean, if you can call it a bonus, I guess it would be. Mm -hmm. Um. But uh, chat has been clamoring for us to do this, and now that the cops aren't here, uh, Josh, I've been playing Dark Souls One again. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Yeah. <laughs> so it's cool. Uh, New Game Plus does increase, you know, the damage and health of enemies and bosses. Um, have you not done New Game Plus before? I have not. This is. I, oh. I went straight from Dark Souls 1 right into Dark Souls 2, and then I quit halfway through that, and we have to play Dark Souls 3 again. I'm going nuts here. Yeah, we, let's we do gotta, it. We I'm gotta ready. do it. Um, so, I, I thought I had all my gear, like, I'm ready, I'm, I'm buff, I'm ripped, I've got all this sweet armor, and I'm like, I'm just gonna fucking tank everything. Uh, no, it's still Dark Souls. <laughs> like, I've got a badass weapon, I've got badass armor, and I'm getting, you know, my shit kicked left and right. Uh, it's it's still a hard-ass game. Uh, um, so, yeah. there's actually a little bit of Dark Souls news that I didn't get put in the show notes. 
but I think it's worth mentioning real quick and not to talk about it forever. But Dark Souls 3 is $12 on the new Humble Monthly Bundle, and that comes with the Ashes of Ariandel DLC, and then mm. whatever other games they add for their monthly thing. So basically, uh, it's the Humble Monthly. It's like a subscription service. Every month you get new games. Um, you can cancel oh. it whenever. So, but this one, they announced Dark Souls now. Uh, so if you want to do the Humble Monthly thing, you'll get Dark Souls, the DLC, for $12, and then whatever other games they add into it for the month and you could just cancel it so I've even the remaster even even just for dark souls 3 i think uh what's the base price of the game like 30 bucks uh yeah i think so so this is already so probably the cheapest it's ever been at this point yeah and it, so you can you can jump onto the monthly uh get dark souls 3 and then cancel and you keep the game uh, it's not like they take the stuff away from you. It's not mm -hmm. the the Netflix of games. They're actually giving you full games. Yeah. Uh, so if you want Dark Souls three, which, um, I uh, I can't really say it's the best in the series. I haven't finished it yet. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. but it's it's certainly up there. Uh, and it's just a great game. And I, get good. I have a question. So if sure. you buy the hum humble monthly right now, then you could download Do Dark Souls right now, and then you immediately cancel your subscription do you get the rest of the games that will be added on later for this month or um you have to like keep the subscription uh, yeah. active until all the games have been gone through and then you cancel no, after that no uh, idea i'm curious i'm curious about no that clue. so if uh if you're looking to get into dark souls you know three is not a bad place to start it's not I'm like actually... a big sprawling uh rpg like series where things are linked things are linked but loosely uh you don't need to play one or two to jump right into three you can just do it Absolutely. I'm, I'm actually thinking about it, but I don't know. You might want to wait because, you know, they're remastering one and one is where all the memes are. So <laughs> might as well hit one and, <laughs> yeah. and be a part of it. I mean, I, really, you don't know, like uh, a fresh Dark Souls series, like, you know, on launch is really where it's at. And I'm sure that one will come out relatively soon. I don't know if they did a release date on it yet, but if you're waiting, might as well keep waiting and just jump on Dark Souls one remastered. But worst case, let's say you buy this tomorrow. Uh, you know, we can we can jump in with you. We can Absolutely. we can go full full sunbro and run through Dark Souls three, <laughs> all three of us. Jolly awesome. cooperation. All right, let's. Uh, is there any other Dark Souls talk? Can we move on? So oh, we, yeah, so no, we don't do we can no. No, 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 no. Yeah, we can, there... we can talk Dark Souls uh, all day no. long. No, no, no. no. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you though. Uh, what's even more frustrating than Dark Souls? Uh, is Contagion VR. Contagion. It's... What's that? It, yeah. It's, Explain. Kind of, it's, I don't think I've ever... It's a zombie VR game. They have a... It's, the demo is free. Totally free okay. demo. The full game isn't out. Uh, this is still super early access. I put out the demo to show people, hey, we're working on this. We're going to be building, uh, you know, this VR title. Uh, you know, the hype is real. Um, but unfortunately... I now have this. This is the the double edged sword with demos, right? I play the demo, and now I know for certain I will never buy this game. Um, <laughs> it has some of the worst voice acting I've heard since Resident Evil on the PlayStation. It is so goddamn bad. Nice. Um, and uh, the the game runs like absolute dog shit. I was getting. 20 frames per second and with vr 90 is your minimum if you're trying to prevent motion sickness <laughs> i was hitting 20. Wow. The, the game is not optimized it doesn't even look good it's it's i mean no vr game is visually stunning so i have no idea what the fuck they're doing in their engine uh other than not optimizing anything ever um it's just bad it's <laughs> really bad um, isn't that the I one? Can, isn't that the one that they do a bunch of like uh, YouTube vid reaction videos with? And is that the same oh, one? No, really? No. Uh, there's there's a whole bunch of uh, reaction videos in some random zombie game. I don't know what zombie game that is. Do you, I don't know if you know. There's probably a bunch of shitty zombie games yeah. on the no, VR a ton of marketplace them. or whatever. So what you're yeah, saying it's... is VR games are still kind of bad. So no, with the exception no, no, of a not handful, at all. not at all. <laughs> there's 
there are plenty of great VR games. Um, one of the cheaper VR games, I think it was like five bucks or something. It might might be three even. Uh, was a game called Lightblade VR, uh, and that is one of my favorite games on the Vive. Um, it's a knockoff, unlicensed, use a lightsaber and redirect lasers back at a robot. You know, Millennium Falcon style in Star Wars. Um, it's just fun it's a good time and you get to wield lightsabers like you're a jedi and it's it's so cheap and so much fun and you do one thing and only one thing um it's not a deep game it you know to complete the game it might take you a day but it's always fun to jump in hot dogs horseshoes and hand grenades is fantastic um let's see there's 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 a new uh, game there's a new game coming out called beat saber and Beat you, Saber. yeah, it's a VR game, and you have two lightsabers, and uh, it's like a Guitar Hero style music game where the the things come at you, and you have to slash them with your lightsabers, and you have to hit the the color of the each. You have like a blue and a red one. You have to hit the color right, and then it will show a direction on the thing that you have to hit. That's the direction you need to swipe at. So you're you're using your lightsaber to play hmm. like DDR Guitar Hero style rhythm game. It looked really cool. I might have to get into this. The closest, well, I guess uh, if you want rhythm games on VR, uh, there is Thumper, uh, which is you'll probably play it with a controller. I don't think it's got Vive controller support or Oculus controller support, mm -hmm. uh, but you can put on the headset and get a nice 3D view. Um, there's Res infinite uh which is actually fucking terrible as a vr game so don't buy that unless you're gonna play it just you know mouse and keyboard style um yeah there's there's a lot of good vr games out there but uh the vive at, at the very least doesn't have a killer app um you know fallout 4 vr sounds really cool but i don't want to play a 60 hour rpg in vr yeah. um it's just not interesting to me doom vr turned out really bad um, hopefully they're going to get that fixed eventually. Um, but yeah, it's it's getting there. I suppose we'll see. <clears throat> yeah. So, so Adam. Yes. Have you been playing anything? Not a lot. Uh, not really. Not, not much to discuss on. I played a little Rocket League. Um, I played a couple of games of Battlegrounds today. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, PUBG, whatever you want to call it. And I was kind of surprised because I haven't played it in a couple of weeks. And uh, after their first 1.0 release, after they fixed the rubber banding issues or whatever, you know, it was feeling pretty solid and it was good. And then today I tried to play uh, with our buddy Bivens and we were having a lot of technical problems. Uh, hmm. Issues getting into the match. Um, there, It would just show the, the black screen with the Battlegrounds logo in the middle. And then we could like hear the lobby, but we weren't in the lobby. And then we could hear the plane flying, but we still just saw this screen. And then it finally brought us into the game after we had already flown all the way across the map. And we had like, oh, Jesus, you know, a two second window of jumping out before it would automatically kick us. And, uh, and it was just a, a giant pain in the ass, <laughs> really. Hmm. And then we played a second game. Uh, same thing happened. Then we played a third game, and it never did anything. It just got stuck on that screen, and we both had to force close the game. And this was weird because we both had the same issues at the same time. It wasn't like one of us was having problems and one of us wasn't. That sucks. <clears throat> yeah. I... <sighs> Yeah. That's kind of the nature of those yeah. circle games, though. Most of those circle games have <laughs> <Kinda jinky>. issues. <laughs> well, well, I I have never seen, um, you know, super 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 bad bugs in Fortnite. Uh, they happen, but um, you know, for me, they're relatively rare. So uh, there is well, one. There was one stable. that's really big that stopped me from even playing. Oh. And if any of you are actually having the same issue. Um, <clears throat> it was just crash constantly. It was crashing constantly for me mm. because I was running Spotify. By the way, if anybody's what? having an issue running, uh, launching the game and they're running Spotify, it will crash your game. If you're not Spotify, launch it again. It'll work. What? Interesting. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just want to listen to the music and, and run around and shoot people, but <laughs> apparently Fortnite doesn't want anything to do with that. Uh, I might want to submit a ticket. Why don't, don't you just put a C- uh, why don't you just put a CD in your like boom box? I- I'll just put I'll just put my uh, my cassette uh, my cassette yeah. tape. Don't you have a walk? Yeah, just yeah, just grab your Walkman with that uh, I'll, three I'll, times I'll that bass boost time. and sixty second skip protection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not using Winamp. <laughs> yeah. I got six skins for Winamp. <laughs> PUBG skins. skins. Yeah. Yeah. PUBG so while we're on while we're on PUBG, there's actually a, a news a PUBG news thing. Um, mm. PUBG is patching to try to fix the the new map. I don't remember the name of it. The desert map. Um, I guess people hate the map because it's so sprawling and open. Uh, and people are actually removing files from the game so that they don't have to play it. It'll basically automatically oh, leave really? when they join that map. Yeah. So they're going to uh, kind of reconfigure the loot locations, um, add more buildings into the map, and then add more like dirt trails for vehicles to drive on to make it a little easier to traverse. So oh, crazy. Hopefully, hopefully that helps. Uh, I actually like the map a lot, but... I think these changes are good, and I think I would like it even more. Yeah, I, I like I like the new map. Uh, speaking of maps and map updates, uh, have you guys played the new Fortnite uh, with map changes? No, uh-huh. no, I haven't yet. It's I really downloaded, good. I I, uh, I launched the Epic installer today and got everything updated. I haven't played Fortnite in a couple weeks, so we totally I, I'm excited to yeah to see what that's all about. Yeah, it's it's nice. Um, they've actually got a sprawling vertical section um, with towers, and uh, we saw some crazy shit when we were playing the other night. Um, <laughs> it's just nuts because everybody will jump there, and, and it's all urban warfare because it's very compact, it's very vertically oriented, mm-hmm. really cool stuff, and really takes advantage of the building mechanics. Um, I'm I'm really enjoying the new map. Uh, there's very few dead zones now so in this was uh more of a problem in PUBG than fortnite because the fortnite map is smaller uh but fortnite did have those areas where you would just be running in a field and there's nothing because it's just an empty you know open plain uh those are few and far between now uh you're there's actually a ton of stuff oh my yeah, gosh it honestly it feels a little crowded uh and a little more threatening because you are always next to a town Almost 100% of the time. Didn't some... Wasn't there a new location, a new drop location that was created specifically by someone's requesting it on Reddit? I remember I remember reading that somewhere. I'm not yeah. going to pull it up now because I totally forgot about it. They did. I just remembered it now. Yeah, they added... I forgot what it was. Some spooky ghost tower place. I don't know. <laughs> but they they added it because someone on Reddit. So it's, it's getting pretty good. Hopefully, hopefully they keep up with these uh, pretty sweet updates. Yeah, it'll be nice. Um, I I didn't really play much else other than that. A little bit of Rocket League, a little bit of Divinity, which is hard as fuck. If you are mm. not on your A game in Divinity, you will die. <laughs> and you will die hard. It's a hardcore <laughs> RPG. That's yeah. Everybody says that. And I'm I'm getting slowly working my way through the uh, the Zelda DLC, uh, which is really good. I'm liking it. I'm really mm. happy with it. I can't wait to start it. I am in a period right now where I'm about to drop Mario because I finished Mario. I did. Oh, did I you? finish nice. the, the main story? Yeah, main okay. story was cool. So you got your uh, roll. Yeah, it was good. I hit that. Um, you know, uh, now I have a whole bunch of other shit to do. Um, it's good. I'm in uh, the the castle area, and I won't go too too deep into that. But well, I mean. Is it worth it? I really want to, like, I don't know. I know we're, like, super yes. into spoiler. Yes, it is, <laughs> it is worth it. Keep keep tr- keep trucking along. No, 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 no. I mean, like, is it, should I even, like, hold back what I'm, like, about it? Like, what's going on? Because right now I, I, I'm a little bit, like, I know we're very no spoilery. Like, that, that's a lot of what we're doing. Yeah. If any of you are playing Mario, I just have a general question. And I, maybe maybe if, if you are going to or you're planning on it, maybe, like, Plug your ears, mute for like a second. I'll go like this when I'm done. So spoiler mode, engage. I do this again. 
So we got a spoiler. So engaging spoiler mode. So everyone yes. mute and just... watch until he does that again. Right, so hold on. Yeah, and when I do this again, <laughs> you can unmute. <laughs> or if anyone is listening, uh, I don't know. You're gonna have to fucking figure it out because I don't know how to gesture. Sorry, <laughs> through audio. That's cool. they'll, they'll figure it out. I could so, maybe cut this for the audio only version, so you don't have to worry about it. We'll we'll figure oh, okay. something we'll, out with that. We'll figure we'll it out. I don't, don't know. worry about it. Just yeah, just it's do not, it. You'll, it's you'll a be very fine. very minor thing, and that is uh, the bosses. You have to read. You redo the bosses, right? Like at the end, and that's yeah. pretty minor. It, it I kind of hate it in a way. Like it's cool. It's a gauntlet. It's no. It's it, not cool. It's lazy. I hate it. That's that. my point. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Like, it's cool that you get to do it. They're a little bit harder. Maybe there's an extra little dot here and there of like, like for the thing that vomits up and that I. It's really that's really gross, by the way. The bird that like vomits into the <laughs> stew. It's disgusting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it. Uh, th there's like maybe like a little less dots. Maybe it's a little more complicated to get through. Um, but it's not that much harder. And I'm going through it, and I'm, I'm like, this is kind of boring. Even the even the castle is kind of boring. The coolest part is the eight Yoshi, and that's cool. And I'm not going to spoil how those mechanics work because they're actually kind of interesting. Um, even though we're in spoiler mode, uh, I'm just hoping that there. I know that there's more. Peach being kind of a bitch and leaving a mish, uh, immediately after we saved her was kind of shitty, but um, <laughs> we'll see where it goes from here. I guess. <laughs> Yeah, but it's anyway. um you you will have to you will have to get through that. Uh, actually, you might not have to get through that. I I will say I did it. I didn't enjoy it. Uh, and the prize you get at the end of that gauntlet isn't worth it in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, so go through, collect a bunch of moons, hit five hundred, and see if you get anything else. Uh, if you don't, then you know go through the fucking rabbit gauntlet. <laughs> okay, spoiler mode disengaged. Be fine. Yes. So yeah. I don't. I don't. I think I. I will probably stop with Mario at this point. Um, I. It's fun. It was cool. You know, New Dunk City was really hype. Everything was really fun. Um, you know, it, it's good. But I think I might just kind of move on to Zelda, play through Zelda, and then just get ready for Bayonetta. I think that's really my Switch goals. You know. I, I don't enjoy some of the other games on Switch, so I I, I really want to try Zelda. Zelda looks <clears throat> absolutely amazing. I played it for a very brief period of time, and I got really really excited. So I think maybe maybe it's time to make that switch over to Zelda and try to get through it. <laughs> yeah, I I will say um, don't totally abandon Mario. I mean, you you basically completed the tutorial by credit rolling. Um, <laughs> That's kind of because an odd, the, the odd way to go about things. <clears throat> I mean, it happens, they built it in a. It's just they weird. built it in a weird way, uh, but the the best content in Mario Odyssey comes after you roll the credits. Okay. Um, All right. Well, I'll 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 keep trying. I'll go through the areas that I was talking about uh, prior to you know spoiler warnings, um, or after post spoiler warning. Yeah, you get the idea. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll I'll go through those areas. I'll give it a shot. Um, I'll circle back, but I think my main focus now is probably going to be Z Zelda. I'm going to take take that cartridge out, put it aside for a little while, and uh, I'll, I'll let you know how I'm feeling about it uh, later on. <laughs> but um, yeah, so so uh, apart from Mario, you know, I also have been playing some Rocket League as you know the season's ending. You've been getting on that grind. Yeah, it's been pretty pretty brutal. <laughs> it's a really good. It's really good. Like you're improving all that stuff, and it, it, it's crazy. Like the, the end of the season's right here. Like there's gonna be a whole bunch of new stuff. Um, like tournament tournament mode was announced. All of this really really uh, hype stuff. New inventory management. If any of you have giant inventories like me, um, you'll be able to go through and and sort and make everything look pretty. Like apparently, uh, different car colors were announced as well. So like, before you couldn't have um, like in the game you have multiple different car colors. So you can have like the octane, and then you have a blue octane, and a red octane, and a white octane. Um, <clears throat> now you can actually put them per team color, which I feel like is a weird thing for them to 
to not do immediately. <laughs> it seems it seems really strange that like you wouldn't be able to assign those per team, but whatever. Um, but it, it's pretty cool. So the the biggest thing that uh, that I've been checking out with Rocket League is is the progression in Rocket League and and in esports in general. Um, a little while ago, uh, there was a, a video. I think it was probably quite a while ago, but I think it was uh, was it. Phase Clan or, or or one of the Counter Strike teams, they they actually hired on a psychologist into esports. It was one of the first esports psychologists, and they brought her huh. in. And she and the the team was really down. They were like they weren't doing that well. They weren't making um, the numbers that they should. All of that stuff. They're not they're not winning as much as they should. And they brought her on board, and and she went through and talked like and talked with them. And uh, and and they work things out, and they actually turned around and won a major after that. So nice. it it really there was a really big cause and effect with that. And mm -hmm. psychology and esports is a big deal. Um, oh, absolutely! And I think it's going to become a, a even bigger deal uh, if you guys haven't taken the time to um, to check out different YouTube channels for Rocket League. There's a really great one that uh, I discovered recently called Bad Boogle. Um, Google, and he, I, yeah. So, so there's a lot of trainer packs. There's a lot of training things. There's like you, you go to Squishy Muffins, uh, you know, YouTube channel, and he tells you how to do a half flip and how to shoot things off the ceiling, and you know all these interesting things. And there's tutorials for like like Rizzo has all these tutorials, and and they're great, right? They're great for learning. But what what's really interesting that Bad Google does is he takes it to a different angle. He talks about the psychology of learning and what it takes to learn. He talks about uh, mindfulness meditation and really interesting ways for uh, you that the way the brain works when you're trying to learn a new skill. And if you guys aren't Rocket League players, that's fine. I was going to say, this sounds, any, like, this sounds like it applies to more than just, even though it's a Rocket League video, it applies to much more. A lot of it applies to general life. And just mm -hmm. understanding and learning, and he he ha he cites all of his um, like what you know who he is and and what he's done in the past, and and he's uh you know he's the real deal. And you go through and you, you listen to him; they're a little dry, um, but he goes through and he tells you how the brain functions and how it learns and how it perceives things and how to you know get through tough spots. And it, it's it's a really great watch. And it really just got me thinking, like, you know, like psychology in gaming is should be a bigger deal than it is. Um, because, you know, even in sports, there's, there's sports psychologists. It's a whole mm -hmm. thing you can go to school for, right? It's, yeah. It's a, and esports you know, is have, even more mental than exactly. physical sports. So that should be even amplified in importance. Right. And it's not. And I think this is like, you know, watching that and then and then checking out, you know, CSGO's new uh, esports psychologist. I, I would really like to see a lot more of this in mm -hmm. esports. Um, uh, so I actually have a friend that's a psychologist and he's going to come in and uh, and he's going to start working with our current Rocket League team, which is now a full roster. I don't know if you guys hey. know. But we now officially have the full roster um, of uh, Didi and Jake from State Farm. <laughs> nice. Are now are now that, are now. Do we complete. have like the real Jake from State Farm. Yeah, yeah, it's the real Jake from State Farm. Holy, holy shit! Yeah, he streams. Um, you can. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, yeah. So so just get hyped. Those guys are awesome, and uh, we're going to be doing as much as we can for them, uh, and especially like on the psychology end of it, we're going to run some experiments. So we have some, we have some people coming in that are going to work with them and talk with them. Like, what are your guys' thoughts on that sort of thing, especially psychology in video games? It's interesting. Um, the, the thing I'd like to stress though, is that this could never work for Dota 2 for a very specific reason. Mental training in Dota 2 uh, just involves screaming at the top of your lungs while simultaneously crying. Um, and it, it takes a kind of like a, a major depressive episode uh, uh -huh. with suicidal tendencies. Um, is so, really how you get 
good at Dota so 2. So to be a Dota 2 player, you actually it's preferable to have mental illness and No, no, uh, no, no. It's it's not psychotic preferable. Breaks. It's required. Okay. <laughs> okay, gosh. Gotcha. Absolutely required. But no, I think I think absolutely uh this should be a very big deal and you know, any any competitive esport there's a lot a lot of stress involved in that. Any any competitive right. thing ever, but uh, you know you're you're dealing with stress. You're you're pushing your mind to its limits. Uh, you know, strategically in the game, and then just you know keeping track of everything. Uh, inputs, you know, hitting the right buttons and the right timing. It's reaction right. time. Oh. It's strategizing. It's dealing with stress. It's it's everything. And uh, I think that's any kind of mental health improvements is very, very important for this. Right. That's that's kind of uh, what's what's so interesting about it. Uh, this like and again, I, I, I refer back to bad Google. He talks about um, visualizing uh, you doing things mechanically. He talks about different ways that you can really um, really get your mind activated into this learning environment. He, he talks on uh, adolescence versus, you know, our older, our older crowd, like learning and how, how they're able to understand more complex plays more comp, uh, while uh, the more youthful of us are, are, are sponges, right? They're like soaking mm -hmm. things up. It's, it's really fascinating. I can't stress you guys enough. Just absolutely go to this guy's uh, page. I'll post a link in chat. It is one of the best watches I've ever had as far as any anything as far as training in video games or anything like that. So we'll probably try to include this into the show notes too whenever yes, we do please. Uh, post this cast. Um, but conversely to uh, the psychology of, of competitive gaming, I think also more focus needs to be put on the physical aspect of competitive gaming um i don't think a lot of people realize how much physical health affects your mental health and mm -hmm. those those are so directly correlated and absolutely applies to gaming uh, we think of this as primarily a mental activity but you know anything that affects your mind affects your your ability in the game so if you're eating like crap you're not sleeping you're not exercising you're in poor physical health you're not going to be able to compete to the degree that you need to be. Um, I think that right. should be that should be a higher focus. And also uh, with video games, there's the risk of repetitive stress injuries of the hands, wrist, forearm, you know, whatever, carpal tunnel, tendonitis, that kind of stuff. Um, I think that should be more of a focus as well. You know, stretching, mm -hmm. any, any kind of physical uh, activity that would help them. I think that should be more more focused on. Yeah, agreed. Well, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's move on. What do you mean? <laughs> to what? Dark Souls. No. <laughs> All right. So we, already, we, already we, already thought, that. <laughs> we thought that uh, you know Gwen, the Dark Lord of uh, of Cinder. Uh, we thought his son uh, was actually. Um, you know, our, our son bro. It turns out can it's we, not. It's actually the, the Dragon Rider. Can we, can we not? Just yeah, we just can let not. you know. That's also, it's, that's a spoiler. Is it, though? Like, Is it? I, yeah. Have you ever know. played through Dark Souls and actually followed the, the lore? I I don't know. Anyway, maybe, maybe I will in the future, so but you already ruined Dude. it, so never mind. Maybe I won't. <laughs> so, don't worry, everybody, because Star Wars <laughs> Battlefront 2... <II, laughs> yes is re-enabling their microtransaction. Oh, what? perfect. Yep. That's good. Turn them back on. I was worried Why? that game would make a comeback or something. Yeah, so uh, apparently they uh, did not hit their sales targets. Uh, the game, because of all the backlash, actually sold... I mean, it sold a lot, right? It's a Star Wars game made by EA. It's going to sell a lot regardless, but mm -hmm. it didn't sell quite as good as they were hoping mm -hmm. due to all the... Uh, you know, crazy bullshit with progression and microtransactions. So the the best way to fix that problem was to turn on the microtransactions again. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure. I mean, so. they they. I mean, they said they were going to do this from the beginning. 
Uh, just a, a quick recap for anybody who didn't follow this. Uh, it was a pretty big deal, but in case you didn't hear, uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2 had a whole lot of microtransactions on release, uh, a lot of pay-to-win elements, and people were very pissed. They were very mad. And so uh, EA decided, okay, we're going to take these out here for now, uh, rebalance some of the, the way experience points works and non-monetary ways of getting some of this content in the game. And then they were going to kind of rethink and redo all of this stuff to be a little more fair, you know, where people mm. would accept it. And now they're bringing back the microtransactions, um, you know, in an effort to probably uh, try to sneak that back in there, or maybe they reworked well, trying, it to be more just fair. Trying to make their money back. Yeah. I mean, they, 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 the production costs alone probably crippled them pretty good, especially after no one bought it. I don't know how much it costs, but from what I, mean, I from what I was watching and seeing, I mean, there that's yeah. a lot of money, a lot of time. It's it's I mean it's worth mentioning they're still selling a lot they still sold a lot mm -hmm. I mean it's a major AAA Star Wars title there are you know a whole lot of people that probably bought the game and had no idea there was any controversy regarding the micro actions whatsoever right uh, parents buying it for their kids you know all kinds of stuff but I know plenty of people who pre-ordered the game yeah that being said. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to know exactly how the microtransactions are going to work now, and I want to know if they kind of fixed some of the pay-to-win elements and made these microtransactions, you know, more more optional. You know, I don't want people to be You're probably just going to turn it on. They just don't even care. Yeah. That's what I <laughs> that's think. What I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, just, just want to know. go and turn it on. Like, yeah. I would like to think that they kind of rebalanced it and made it a little bit more fair, a little bit less of just a blatant money grab. Mm -hmm. uh, but... You know, it's EA. You don't, you can't tell. It's probably just going to be bad, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm still not buying it. <laughs> no. No, God, no. Um, Which is a shame. It was, it had a lot of potential. So, um, Gigantic is going to shut down the third person MOBA uh, on July 31st. Uh, shut down, shut down, shut down. Shut down. That's, the one, wow. gone, that's, that's the one Dark Soul Invader and Eric got really into there for a while, isn't it? Yep. Oh, yep. That's a shame. They um, spent money on that one, too. Yeah. I, I So they've got a quote here. Unfortunately, it, do, it did not resonate with as many players as we'd hoped, meaning uh, we only had Dark Soul Invader and Eric playing at any one time, <laughs> so we have to shut the game down. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. They both but, spoke yeah, I real mean, highly. Of, I didn't play it personally. We did it. It was a postcast game once, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, I, was, it was, I wasn't yeah. there for that one, though. It was it, fun. It, it, just, yeah, you had it was it. fun. Oh. It wasn't a bad game. Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of felt a little bit derivative. Um, it, it It's not bad. It was free. I didn't drop any money on it. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it sucks. It, fun. It, it sucks for the team. sucks for the company. And it sucks for the players, most of all. Mm -hmm. It's a shame when something they... that's free. I mean, that's it's so hard to make money on anything that's free like that uh, it's isn't kind of a isn't Par isn't paragon closing too i know yeah. that's not in the show notes but yeah we talked paragon about it is, did we talk about that last week i think we paragon. did yeah so like all of these mobas are, are like you know shutting down because no one's playing them i guess it's not really a MOBA. Dota and League I, of legends and whatever it, it feels like it feels like moba was used really loosely <laughs> yeah uh, I, I can't help but think that these are not mobas these are just kind of like hero based shooters <laughs> so, you know i i think i think we're witnessing the end of a trend right because right. you know dota 2 and league of legends started printing money hugely popular hugely successful and then everyone and their mother had to come out with a moba um and now now we're seeing that with circle games yeah right? we're, we're seeing it you know battlegrounds you know kicked off the the majority of the hype and then fortnite right uh, you know right in behind it um i i, I can almost guarantee we're gonna see a ton of of new battleground style games coming out because you know Oh, I mean, there's a bunch. The there's a bunch announced already, and some of that sounds super fun. There was uh what's that parkour zombie game? I always forget. I always forget the name of it. It was good. Uh, a dying light. Uh, dying dying light. light. Dying light's doing a uh, 
is doing a battle, battleground style game. And I think I, I kind of play the shit out of that. It sounds really <laughs> fun, <laughs> but like parkour zombie kind of. Uh, there's probably not gonna be zombies, right? Because uh, it's about it's a what is it battle royale style game? I think yeah. that's what well, there might be. Called. You never but, know. Either way, I think that would be kind of fun, right? Dying light, uh, a dying light battle royale game sounds kind of dope, but. We'll see. We'll see what comes out. We'll see what's popular. What's I don't know. It doesn't matter, does it? Does it really matter? <laughs> no. If you want to be no, a disgruntled old, old man about does, it, like does we anything... did the horrors. Hold on. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You stuff. said you said the key phrase that we can play off of. Uh, speaking of being a disgruntled old man, <laughs> oh, is going to launch their online system in 2018. The thing that's still woefully incomplete in a piece of shit to use. Thanks, Nintendo. Go fuck yourselves. Uh, Nintendo has also <laughs> partnered with the the studio uh, behind the Minions movie to make a, an animated Super Mario movie. This will be Nintendo's first foray into movies since the 1993 Super Mario Brothers movie, which is hailed as a timeless classic. A timeless wait, lawful wait, wait. classic. <laughs> that's. Are you are you saying that that's what 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 uh, company is that? I always forget. They what, did uh, uh, Despicable Me, Illumination, the Minions Thank movie, Illum- and yeah. uh, Secret Life of Pets. Yeah, right. Well, they do. They do a bunch of them. Oh, yeah. They're really those. That that's a really good. If they wouldn't didn't get so hung up on the Minions, I feel like that would be a really awesome studio. Like even one that would like rival Pixar in a lot of ways because that they have a really good staff. A lot of those dudes are uh, I know, and they're really they're really freaking good. Um, I would love to see a Mar- them do a Mario movie. They would kill it. They do such a good job. I'm so I worried. So. I am so goddamn worried. Mm-hmm. I mean, so the last time Nintendo, uh, you know, released a movie, it failed so badly and was such a stain on on Nintendo's brand image that they didn't even talk to anyone about movies or television or anything like that until right now, right? From 1993 until 2018 was how bad they were hurt by this. Uh, it has to be better or Nintendo will never make a movie or TV show of anything. That's probably a good thing. I mean, video game movies are pretty garbage for the most part anyway, and they usually don't follow the lore or anything like that. Like the Silent Hill one was was neat, but it, was it wasn't. Okay. It didn't follow it the... Amazing. It didn't it, follow anything. I, I loved the first Silent Hill movie. The second one was a cash grab. Uh, yeah. But the first ga- or the first movie was kind of like a mix between Silent Hill 1 and 2. You uh, mean Resident I thought Evil? It- no, no, Silent Hill. They made a sequel? Yeah, there, yes, was, there, was, there was a second one. It was so bad. I saw it in theaters. <laughs> it was during the 3D hype, and they had yeah. like shit reaching through the screen to grab you. It was so fucking bad. Uh, but I really enjoyed the first movie. The uh, director of the first Silent Hill movie actually had a PlayStation and a PS2 on set. And when Mm. they were uh, shooting and setting up scenes, he would actually get to that part in the game and then bring people over like, you know, set designers and actors and say, Hey, look, it has to look like this and you have to act this way. Hmm. Um, Yeah. He was, he was hardcore into the Silent Hill franchise. Really cool guy. I hope he didn't say you have to act this way because the acting was terrible in this case. The acting was (laughs) terrible. It was awful. I'd like to see them. I don't know. Like I watched it, and it didn't really like. It didn't really capture the essence of Silent Hill. Like when I really, I really came down to it when I watched him. I, I just didn't. I didn't feel. I didn't feel the same things I felt when I played through Silent Hill. Like all the Silent Hill series. Like it didn't. It didn't get that like you know psychological, you know, thing. The psychological horror aspect of it yeah. never ever can, came through on the movies. And it was just like creepy guy in a costume doing creepy things, and they and they all looked like the guys, and they, like the setting was cool, but it didn't have that like like there's certain situations in Silent Hill that always like resonated with me, like walking into the room where it's just a normal room, and then the lights go out, and then your character starts bleeding, and it turns on, and the walls are all meat, and you're like, <laughs> you know, like Me-walls. like that that sort of thing, those that, that psychological aspect uh-huh. of Silent Hill was never in there. Like I really would like them to do a Crimson Butterfly. Uh, movie, but I don't think they'd ever capture the same like feelings that I had uh, during that game. Like the same like feeling of like 
oh, what's going on here? Holy shit, that's what's going on here. Like, <laughs> n- like none of that will ever be captured. And I, I wish, yeah. I wish that they could. And I think a Mario movie is so simple that I think they could pretty easily. Um, it's just like it really comes down to who's doing it, you know. Um, like the people that did the Lego movie did an amazing job. The first Lego movie was they awesome. They did. The, I I fucking heard somebody was making a movie about Lego. I was like, wait, okay, so it's not a documentary. They're gonna make a movie about Lego. This is gonna be the stupidest shit I've ever seen. I sat down, I watched it. I was like, oh my god, this is a fantastic movie. Uh, yeah, it, it was, was great. It's the same. Really people enjoyable. Did, it's the same people that did Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Um, if you guys didn't mm. know that, the first one, the second Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs was done by a different director, and the reason was is because they were off doing the Lego Movie, so that's why that happened like that. That's why Cloudy Two sucked. <laughs> um, if anyone's super into animation like me, <laughs> um, there are dozens of yeah, us. I'd li- yeah, I'd really like to see them do really well with the Mario movie. Yeah, it'll, yeah. it'll be interesting. Could. I think they easily could. I think I'll watch it. In, I'll definitely, oh, I'll definitely watch it, yeah. Um, in other Nintendo news, uh, Nintendo announces a Mario Kart smartphone game called Mario Kart Tour. So there's sure, a why not? massive hmm. lack of details on this, but sure. It's going to uh, be a thing. Animal Crossing is out there. Mario Run is out there. Why not bring out Mario Kart? Okay. Mario yeah. Kart, uh, I you, think, you would be... Out- a good mobile game. I mean, it could be. Racing games it, suck it on be. mobile. Really? They do. do That's they? what I'm worried about. The uh, controls yeah, are awful. Yeah, like, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Racing games totally suck on mobile. It's just not a not a fun experience. I mean, granted, the motion control aspect, like if you were, if you're really big into like the tilt controls, this is probably the, the stress, right? Mm-hmm. But I don't really like, I don't really like racing games on mobile. Most of them <laughs> have been like really boring and lame. To be fair, I've not played a racing game on mobile. I just kind of imagined that it would be kind of cool, but the yeah, trials I can games see that. are good. Now that I, I, th- agree, now that but... I think about the the controls, I think yeah, it would be kind of weird. The trials games are good, and I think uh, that's something that Dave points out is um, the trials games were fun, but I wouldn't classify that as like. I mean, granted, there's racing aspects of it, like you race friends, you race people online, but it's a di- it's really more of a niche thing. It's not like your traditional. I'm a car going down a track. You know, and I'm trying to, you know, brake and gas effectively. It's just, it's just not, it's not the same racing aspect yeah. to yeah. me. So, um, thanks to Labo, uh, Nintendo's ploy to charge you, uh, you know, between $16 and $70 for a piece of cardboard uh, and a game cartridge. Um, we now know that the Joy-Con's infrared sensor is really fucking cool. Really fucking cool. Uh, apparently, the infrared sensor actually has a camera. It's not like something you take high def pictures with, but mm-hmm. it's good enough to be able to uh, look inside of um, you know the piano shell that was in the trailer and detect which keys are being pushed on the piano. It's really That's cool. Awesome. Mm-hmm. That's cool. That is pretty really good, good tech. Um, We'll link this in the show notes. I'm going to throw this in Twitch chat so you guys can check this out. They've actually got uh, an image of a picture uh, being shown that the Joy-Con has detected. So it's it's really cool. And it's just like Nintendo to build something weird into their system that people don't find out about until, you know, a year after it came out. I was going to say, I, didn't, um, I had no idea that it was that advanced. I didn't either. <laughs> I, I, I'm on top of this shit, and I had no fucking clue. <laughs> That's awesome, but it's cool. it's really cool. I am I'm really excited about Labo. Uh, well, I, I will I'll definitely be picking up one of those kits. It'd be um, fun just to build those things. Like even if they, it's kind of gimmicky and or if part of the game isn't fun, just like putting those things. I like putting stuff together. Yeah, yeah. Only only Nintendo could sell a cardboard box and get people fucking hyped. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> um. Valve will start patching Dota 2 way more often. They're actually going to move to a an agile model and not dump giant patches on people. Uh, so that's cool. And they also just dumped a giant patch on people. So that's also cool. Uh, the Dota 2 spring cleaning update. Um, lots of bug fixes, lots of little quality of life improvements, some UI changes. Uh, really nice stuff, but we'll start getting, you know, 
good fast balance patches every couple weeks from Valve. I'm kind of hyped for this. Uh, and in terrible news, and this is a great way to end the podcast. Um, oh God! Valve has suspended the co-creator of Counter Strike uh, after he was arrested uh, for sexual exploitation of a child. So, yeah, fuck yeah. that guy. Yeah. You just, yeah, you, yeah. You don't do that. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, I'm I'm sure I'm sure there will be a trial. We don't know uh, guilty or innocent until things come to fruition. But you usually don't arrest somebody for uh, that type of charge unless you have some credible evidence to back it up. Right. Uh, so go fuck yourself uh, yeah. and go to hell. Fuck that guy. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, um, is there anything else we can end on? <laughs> that, yeah. That, so that was going to be um, the ending. About, but about uh the knights of balder in dark uh, souls one God i really want to know okay, into no. detail yeah, on something. no something and that is uh, that is we do have uh the rocket league tv2 tournament it's coming up yes. people have already been signing up if you guys haven't signed up please sign up it's going to be amazing we're gonna have some uh i'm gonna be casting it so we'll see if that's amazing but we're gonna have bird casting with us which is going to be amazing um we have some really cool people showing up um, and there's a prize pool. It should be. Oh, there is a prize pool. Oh, well, it's supposed to be for fun, right? That's the prize pool. It's the prize for fun, but matter. mainly it's, it's for all about learning. And two time fifty dollars Steam gift cards, one yeah, for each that. contestant. <laughs> Winner takes all. Not there is 50, no second place 50, prize. 50. Fifty for yeah, you. Not, oh, 50, fifty for your doubles I mean, partner. Right, the winner, not not everybody. Just yeah, just, just the, the winner, guy. just the winning team. Yeah, you, you don't team. you don't just get to play and then get a gift card. Yeah. That would be kind of shitty yeah. and expensive. Join if you're not already part of the Discord. Join the Discord. Uh, that all of the stuff you need to know to sign up is now in the chat, and it's also on our announcements page. Yeah. Yep. So far, we've uh, we've got a whole bunch of cool cats coming in. We have some teams already built. Grab your homies. Play some uh, play some Rocket League with us. It's a good time. Always a good time. That's a fun thing to end on. Yeah, yeah. it's much better. <laughs> I, I believe we also it's... have some uh, some Streamlabs news. Yeah, we do. We've got some Streamlabs news. Vospec has resubscribed with Prime for four months. Thank Ooh, you, Vospec. Thanks, dude. Magic Dave 08 throwing bits around like it's his business. 254 bits. He says, do you think I'm just going to let you sit here and out cheer me, Josh? <laughs> and magic dave also gifted a sub to bivens five months oh, cool boy that one. cool bivens cool bivens five months on that not just any bivens cool bivens the coolest of bivens <laughs> he's the coolest <laughs> bivens i know yes and that's that's it that's the that's the stuff that's pretty thank awesome you guys. thank you again really for you that. guys uh subbing donating anything like that it really helps us out and again it uh you know, this guy <laughs> right here. Got Josh a mic. That, that's all because of you guys. And maybe we can do more. Uh, hopefully the next uh, the next batch we'll put into an event. We'll put into something. Something for you guys. Just like, uh, you know, we're upping the quality of the cast. We'll be upping, you know, maybe maybe we'll do some more interesting events. We'll mm. see. We'll see. We'll see how things go. Come along. I vote a, yeah. a hot sauce chicken wing challenge. Let's do. Yeah, that's I'm, a little. But I'm okay with this. Let's do the hot ones thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm good with that. Or you put a bunch of hot sauce on your hands and then grab your favorite controller. Oh, uh, the, my God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nope. <laughs> well, if you would like to check out this podcast, to throw it on Google Play, iTunes, Pocket Cast, whatever, uh, you can find those links and the rss feed over at 72 pinconnector.com or just search for it in your podcast app chances are it's there we're pretty much fucking everywhere uh if you want to tweet at us if you've got like birds or something that want to communicate uh you can find our twitter account at 72 pc podcast do you want to catch this podcast any of the previous podcasts a rad dark souls video uh or any of our other video <laughs> content we're up on youtube at 72 pin connector you can always find us here at our home, twitch.tv slash 72pin connector. And if you really wanted to get old school, uh, you can send us an electronic letter 
fan mail at 72pinconnector.com. Uh, this has been episode 067. I cannot believe we've made it this long. Uh, thank you all for tuning in, for supporting us, for subscribing, all that shit. It's greatly appreciated. And that'll do it for tonight. Coming up next, postcast game, Grand Theft Auto V. No racing. Join us. See you, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Please join us. Please. We're desperate. Just kidding. <laughs> See you. I'm desperate.